Federal government targets 4 million barrels per day oil production. ASA condemns lecturers' mass retrenchments in Kaduna State. In international news, Pakistan's train crash death toll rises to 63. And in sport, Naomi Osaka withdraws from Berlin tournament. This is ANN News. I am Olaju Mokyo Latunji. The federal government has announced plans to increase the country's daily oil production from 1.4 million barrels per day to 4 million barrels per day. Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timmy Presuva, hinted this new development while speaking at the fourth edition of the Nigeria International Petroleum Summit in Abuja on Monday. He also said it is the ultimate goal of the Buhari administration to build up the nation's crude oil reserves to 40 billion barrels. Silva says this would create a conducive environment for hydrocarbon industry to thrive. The House of Representatives ad hoc committee investigating recovered assets had summoned Central Bank Governor Godwin Emethele and National Security Advisor Babagana Monguno. The House committee gave both men 72 hours to appear before it. Same condition was given to the Inspector General of Police Usman Al Kali and the Director General of Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency. Nimasa assured Jamo, who are also to appear before the committee. The CBN governor had failed to show up for an earlier summon by the House. APC House member representing Ogun State, Ibrahim Isiaka, suggested the House should shut down the activities of the agencies if their principals fail to appear. A Kaduna State chapter of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has kicked against the state government's sack of 16 lecturers and two non-academic staff of the university. The lecturers and other staff members were terminated for participating in the Nigerian Labour Congress's five-day warning strike in May. Union Chairman Dr. Peter Adamu described the action as illegal. He says it contravenes the Memorandum of Understanding signed by the Labour Union and Kaduna's the government in May. Adamu says the signed MOU prohibits the victimization of any worker for participating in the industrial action. The union boss further queried the mandate of the vice chancellor to the office of the accountant general of Kaduna State to stop remitting the check of dues of the union. He says that is against the Trade Union Act 17 of 2005, but clearly clarifies check of dues as statutory permitted deductions. It has been days since the federal government banned the operations of micro blogging sites, Twitter, on the Nigerian space. But after so much uproar from all sides, the federal government has given a condition responsible use of social media for the lifting of the ban. Foreign Minister Geoffrey Amar, who spoke after a meeting with some envoys on Monday, says the power to communicate comes with responsibilities. The minister denies earlier reports that Twitter is threatening the country. He said it is rather being used as a platform for destabilization. He added that his decision was key to maintaining security in the country. He declared, quote, without security, everything else fails, end quote. The federal government suspended Twitter operations in the country on Friday after the social media platform deleted a tweet by President Muhammad Buhari, which it deemed as inciting violence. The government claimed Twitter's suspension was to protect the sovereignty of the country, but digital rights advocates called it censorship. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives has summoned Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, before the Joint Committee on Justice, Commerce and Information over the suspension of Twitter. 
The federal government banned travelers from Brazil, India, and Turkey in May because of the rapid increase in the number of COVID-19 cases in those countries. The government says all non-Nigerian passport holders and non-residents who have traveled to the three countries in the last 14 days will be denied entry into Nigeria. It remains unconfirmed how long this order will be in effect. Correspondent Tessa McKinney tells us the impact of this on local businesses. Ezekiel Bok is a travel consultant for Nigerians seeking medical care in India. It's a popular destination for medical tourism among Nigerians, especially the wealthy. But since the government placed restrictions on travel, Ezekiel has been battling to stay in business. The suspension of the flight has stopped people um, even making effort to travel. They won't even come for inquiry of anything, not to talk of traveling. So it has really affected us generally. Economically, there's no income for business people. And then even for the uh, sick people, they, 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 they cannot do, go uh, travel for their treatment. It affects their health. It may lead to death. Ezekiel's experience is just one of many whose businesses are affected by the travel ban. The International Air Transport Association says travel restrictions put in place to counter COVID-19 have caused major economic losses. Nigerians trade with almost every country in the world, and especially countries like China, India, Turkey. This ban, especially for India and Turkey particularly, it will have very grave effects on us as individuals. The pandemic has put pressure on Nigeria's economy. The World Bank attributes 42% of overall job losses in Nigeria between 2020 and 2021 to the outbreak of the coronavirus disease in the country. The government says it has earmarked nearly $200 million to support businesses impacted by the coronavirus disease. The Trade and Investment Ministry says close to a million people are expected to benefit from the credit support. Economic analysts say that doesn't go far enough. The government needs to give incentive, further incentive to local businesses that can replicate the kind of goods and services we get from outside the country, especially these countries where the ban has been placed, and try to encourage them. If we cannot give them additional resources. Ezekiel hopes he will be able to obtain a grant from the government. He says that will help him remain in business. Until then, uncertainty hangs over him. Coming up, African stories. Uganda reimposes strict COVID-19 lockdown as new cases surge. And later, international news. Pakistan's train crash death toll rises to 63. You are watching a... Welcome back. This is ANN News. Egypt received raw materials for the production of 2 million Chinese Sinovac COVID-19 vaccine doses in May after signing an agreement to produce the vaccine locally and distribute it in Egypt and other African countries. Now, local production is scheduled to begin in mid-June. Correspondent Adnan El Maruki has the story. Egypt has welcomed the World Health Organization's approval of Sinovac's Coronavac for emergency use. Cairo had earlier signed an agreement with the vaccine producer to manufacture its jabs domestically. The Chinese technology is highly advanced and I know well that uh, the advancement in the manufacturing of pharmaceutical products as a whole and particularly the vaccines uh, after the pandemic of COVID-19, the target uh, from this partnership is to uh, use Egypt as a hub to uh, send or to export uh, these medicines and these vaccines to the Arab countries nearby Egypt and also the African continent because you know well that uh, the China uh, products or Chinese products, uh, particularly medicine and the vaccines, have a very good reputation in uh, the African continent. 
The CEO of the government's vaccine manufacturing arm, Vexera, says the production line for Coronavac will begin churning out the jabs in mid-June. Since May 21, Chinese experts have been working on transferring the Chinese technology to Egypt and setting up the quality control system to oversee the production of the jab. Experts say the step means that such a partnership will put Egypt in a place to assist in further developing the vaccine. Any vaccine uh, have been produced in the past period uh, uh, will undergo a lot of modifications to face the viral infection more accurately. I'm sure that the clinical trials will go on uh, after uh, the, the results of these vaccines have been published in the past period. Uh, this will be modified to, uh, to have a more and more effective results to reach uh, near uh, the 100% efficacy. Egypt says that it's planning to produce some 2 million doses by the end of June. Before rolling the vaccines out to the public, they must get the Egyptian Drug Authority's approval, a process that could take up to 16 weeks. Meanwhile, Vaxera will continue producing and storing the Coronavac jab. Sinovac will routinely export the raw biomaterial needed for the vaccine until Egypt is ready to produce it locally. The Coronavac vaccines made in Egypt will be rolled out in two jabs administered three weeks apart. Egypt has not yet announced a price tag for the much-needed COVID-19 vaccine. Expectations are it will be offered at an internationally competitive price, while domestically it will be distributed by the government and offered for free. Uganda has returned to strict COVID-19 lockdown on Monday after a surge in new coronavirus cases in the country. The new measures include school closures and suspension of inter-district travel to help beat back the surge. Correspondent Leo Zionj reports. There was a visible rush of parents picking their children up from school after the closure of all education institutions as the new measures took effect on Monday. Some of the students were only three weeks into a new school term. It has affected us too, too much. Yeah, as in, you, you have concentrated, you are, you are trying to catch up with the, with the teachers, yeah, catching up with the notes, and you know you are in moods of books. Some parents worry their children are more at risk of harm away from school. Government should have been more strict on schools. We are taking the children home. We work away from our homes. We shall instead be bringing the disease to the children. But school infections have been a major concern. There has also been an increase in cases among young people, most aged between 20 and 39 years. Health officials say the poor compliance to the standard operating procedures like washing hands and wearing a face mask have led to a surge in cases. The capital Kampala is the most affected, registering an average 500 cases per day. To curb further spread, inter-district travels have also been banned, except for the metropolitan part of the capital Kampala. Religious gatherings and weekly open markets are suspended too. Travel from category A countries, as defined by the Minister of Health, remains suspended except for returning Ugandans. At the moment, only India is listed as category A. The restrictions will be implemented for 42 days. Despite efforts to curb the spread through vaccination, vaccine shortages have hampered progress so far. Over 748,000 people have received their first dose. An additional 175,000 doses from the COVAX facility are expected this month. In addition, government will secure 300,000 doses of Sinovac vaccine donated by our friends, the Chinese government. But I want to buy. I don't want to depend on donations. We shall buy. We shall buy from Johnson Johnson, the Americans, from these Chinese, and even from the Russians. The government hopes to vaccinate at least 21 million people over the next 12 months.
Gabon has announced the tightening of travel rules for visitors arriving in the country. Authorities say the new rules will go into effect by the middle of this month and travelers will have to take a coronavirus test and stay in a hotel selected by the Gabonese authorities for a period of 24 hours. The $37 PCR test and the hotel charges will be borne by the visitor. The Bonds Tourism Ministry says only those with a COVID-19 vaccination card will be exempt. Gabonese government also said these precautions are taken to limit the spread of the virus in the country and particularly of the new COVID-19 variants. The alpha variant of the virus first discovered in the UK was detected in the country last February and authorities say they want to remain cautious. When we return, international news. Pakistan's train crash death toll rises to 63. And later, sport. Naomi Osaka withdraws from Berlin tournament. You are watching ANN. Somewhere in the world, every second of the day, news is happening. And of course, Nigeria is bustling with news day and night. That is why ANN doesn't sleep. Our eyes are peeled, wide open, so no story escapes our radar. We stay abreast of world events and happenings at home. We keep you up to the minute in the world of sports. We give you information to stay on top of your investments and all the hard facts you need to navigate your day. If you miss us on air, you can keep up to date on our website and on our social media platforms, Instagram and Facebook at ANN Africa TV. We are ANN African News Network. We do news right in a truly African spirit. Welcome back. This is ANN News. The historic midterm elections in Mexico have handed unprecedented wins to women as they capture territory long dominated by men. These wins have given them strong hope to rest the presidency one day. Preliminary tallies by electoral authorities on Monday showed female candidates securing six of the 15 regional government slots on offer. Those were just too short of the total number of women ever elected to lead regional administrations in Mexico's history. Five of the six went to President Andres Manuel Brothers National Regeneration Movement, Morena, which dominated the state's votes, even as the leftist parties hold on, the lower house of Congress weakened. If results are confirmed, it means the northern border states of Baja California and Chihuahua, Guerrero and Colima on the Pacific coast, as well as Las Cala in the center and Campeque in the south will be governed by women. Latest national census shows there are roughly 4 million more women than men among Mexico's population of 126 million. Political leaders are increasingly at pains to ensure equal representation in government. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris is on her first official trip abroad to Guatemala and Mexico. The VP met with President Alejandro Yamate on Monday in Guatemala City and took on the issue of corruption. She said fighting the scourge would discourage migration from Central to North America. She had advocated for a strong court system and civil governance in the country to wipe out corruption. Then she threw out a warning to migrants not to come to the United States. Do not come. Do not come. Since President Joe Biden took office in January, the number of immigrants taken into custody per month at the U.S.-Mexico border has risen to the highest levels in 20 years. The death toll from Pakistan's horrific collision of two trains on Monday has risen to 63. Railway department officials say more than 1,000 passengers were on the trains that collided in Ghotki district of Pakistan's southern Sindh province. 
A railway department official says six to eight of the total 14 derailed compartments of the two trains were seriously damaged. There was some eyewitness uh, passengers who have survived uh, from this uh, tragedy. They were saying then only 10 to 12 seconds difference between the both trains. Even some passenger was coming down from the train and suddenly the train coming from Lahore hit them. Imran Khan said on his Twitter account that he was shocked by the horrific train accident. He said he has asked the railway minister to reach the site and ensure medical assistance are provided to the injured and offer of support to families of those who died. The local administration has imposed a state of emergency for all hospitals in the district and called for blood donations. Investigations are being conducted to ascertain the cause of the derailment. Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency, Rafael Grossi, says the agency will monitor and reveal the safety of Japan's decision on dumping nuclear polluted water into the sea and the transparency of its implementation. During a meeting in Vienna on Monday, Grossi said the Japanese government requested the assistance of the IAEA shortly after it announced in April its decision to dump nuclear polluted water into the sea. It said the assistance will be provided before, during and after the discharge of the polluted water and will be planned, managed and implemented by the AIEA. Up next, sport. Naomi Osaka withdraws from Berlin tournament. Please stay with us. You are watching ANN. Whether in your house, at your office, on your phone or online, we are there. We have the facts behind the headlines. We cut to the chase with the news you really need. We cover every angle. We are the bigger, better news network. We are African News Network. ANN. Watch ANN News on MITV from a truly African spirit. Somewhere in the world, every second of the day, news is happening. And of course, Nigeria is bustling with news day and night. That is why ANN doesn't sleep. Our eyes are peeled, wide open, so no story escapes our radar. We stay abreast of world events and happenings at home. We keep you up to the minutes in the world of sports. We give you information to stay on top of your investments and all the hard facts you need to navigate your day. If you miss us on air, you can keep up to date on our website and on our social media platforms, Instagram and Facebook at ANN Africa TV. We are ANN. African News Network. We do news right in a truly African spirit. Welcome back. This is ANN News. In sport, Africa's fastest women runner, Blessing Oka. Naomi Osaka has pulled out of next week's Berlin WTA Grass Court Tournament, causing her fans to doubt if she would participate at Wimbledon at the end of this month and even at the Tokyo Olympics. That is ANN News this evening. Thank you for joining us. For details on these and other breaking stories, visit our website, annafrica.news. Conversation continues on our social media platforms, Instagram and Facebook at ANN Africa TV. I am Olajumokil Latinji. Have a great evening.